A tip that I would offer for anybody who's wanting to start up this work would be think clearly about what you want to get out of this work. I mean, do, what are you open to? What are you receptive to in terms of collaborating with students? I mean, from the faculty side, what do you want to get out of the partnerships? And I don't mean have clear learning outcomes necessarily, but why do you want the partnership? So I would say that's, that's one piece of advice. And then just to, another piece of advice would be recognize that there's going to need to be a lot of um, ground laying and relationship building and learning about one another's perspectives and be patient with that process and be um, receptive to the idea that it may go in fits and starts, you know, that you may need to you know, dive really deeply in and then step back and say, oh, wait a minute, maybe that's not the direction I want to go. Just know that it's not going to be a simple linear progression of some kind. And so take the time to let that relationship build. Think big, start small. <laughs> uh, do something which you have some control over, you know, to begin with. Build up your own confidence. Uh, and as much as anything, it's confidence that the students will, will deliver. Uh, and uh, I increase, well, I, I continue to be amazed at the quality of work which students produce um, and, you know, in this sort of area. Um, and often it's, it's, it's as good as and sometimes better um, uh, than the faculty. Um, I, mean, I think we've, we, we've seen students at this conference when they've been acting, um, and I've seen them at the last conference, which really excited me, uh, running a whole session where faculty was there, but the students ran the session, they chaired the session, and to be honest, they did a lot better than I've seen many faculty do. Um, uh, and I think it's building up confidence. Uh, people who are interested in it probably have that confidence, but their colleagues probably lack it, and they'll often think, well, we can't let students do that, you know, it's too much. Give them a head, and uh, I'm just amazed at the quality of what they can do. Make yourself open, but also understand where your boundaries are, and to make those clear as well if you start to feel that you're being pushed too far. And then to know that the students mean best. <laughs> um, I don't know any any other student consultants who would ever say that what they're doing, that they're trying on purpose to criticize or over criticize or over push a professor. Um, not at all. We, from my perspective at least, I want to be a resource and I want to be someone as a, a partner and a help um, for the classroom. So it can feel like pushing too far, but we don't mean it to be that. You don't have to come in to something um, knowing what you want to do with it. And in fact, that m may guide your partnership in a way that's too forceful. So if you sort of just let it evolve organically, that's often when you come up with the best um, sort of progress instead of when you go in there saying, I want to change this about this professor or this classroom, because then you're kind of just um, on a one-way street in terms of being able to be flexible. As the partnership goes on, it's very important to keep in mind you're working with the faculty. You have to stand on his or her um, point, uh, position to think about how this class is, will go. Um, and uh, to re to really appreciate how much they, um, how ma how vulnerable this position, uh, this process can be for them, um, and really appreciate this chance that you're involved, you're invited to involved in this process. Really focus on the language that you use and develop together. That people use the same term and don't necessarily mean the same thing by it, even though they think they might be meaning the same thing by it. So unpacking the terms that you use to describe your commitments and your work is very important. Just really spending time saying, what do you mean by that? What is your goal with that? How do you understand that? How have you experienced that? Really digging into the terms that we take for granted, like teaching and learning, all of those, and everything else that comes in relation to those, I think we, we think that we mean similar things and we don't. And so my advice would be spend time talking about those terms. Uh, get different perspectives. Do they mean different things at different moments or in different contexts? Go in with an open mind. Don't go in with the idea that you are um, bent on changing something because that's going to leave you in a spot where if there is something else becomes the focus of the partnership, then you won't necessarily um, be comfortable with that because you wanted something so far from the beginning. So sort of maintain an open mind, um, be flexible for your professor, sort of 
but also rely on your experience as a student because that is what you bring to this partnership is the fact that you have been a student and you know what works and you know what doesn't. So really don't be afraid to bring in your personal um, experience and feelings towards certain pedagogical methods into this partnership because that is where you, you derive your strength from is what you know. First of all, you're a student and you're coming into the class with that perspective, which is invaluable because this is um, a teacher and they might have been a student, but there's that gap between the time that they were in class and the time that they've been learning to or preparing to teach. And so that in itself is um, great. And then the other thing is you're not meant to change the class. Um, you're not, you're not the person who's going to fix everything. And I think that really unburdens a lot of student consultants when they know that that's not our role. Our role is to go in there and to see what's happening and to show that to the professor and um, so that they can make the choices that are happening in the class and to involve the class in, that cho in the choices that they make. And so we're basically sort of mirroring what's happening, but also giving a chance to understand and um, process what's happening. So definitely, um, no student consultant should feel like they have to fix what's going on. They may observe things um, and talk about them, but not necessarily fix anything. For something like TLI to work, I guess, like I, I feel very strongly that it needs to have you know, a physical, spiritual, intellectual home. It has to have a program, a department, a space, and some people who are rooting it and really perpetuating it. And others may come in and out of it, but it has to have that. But the other thing it has to have is really significant and very real financial support getting a range of student voices. Um, I think of one school that we've worked with that um, made a point of, of uh, inviting only associated student leaders. And while I think they're great to bring in, we're missing out on some of the voices that we most need to hear. And those are the people that don't feel engaged, that feel uh, disenfranchised, and I think that's where the whole notion of incentives too. And it took us not very long to figure out that for students, credit to sustain them and to get a broad range of voices. And some of our students say, I came in because I needed a credit at the 300 level. So I think not diminish that, but at the same time, I'm really impressed with how students, once they get well, Cara used the term uh, reeled in with credit. Then they sort of get reeled in by the real conversation that happens and the genuineness that happens. So I, I think we have to be very careful of honoring student voices in terms of what they need, for example, credit. It's not the only way. If you're going to bring students in and position them as partners and consultants and co-inquirers and all of these uh, shared responsibility kinds of roles, students need support in that because they haven't necessarily been asked to take this kind of responsibility before. They don't necessarily have language to name what it is they know about teaching and learning, even though they feel what they know. And so they also need support in developing that language and developing the confidence and the capacity to talk to faculty in ways that are respectful, but that are also honest and direct. And we, I work a lot with students on developing that kind of language, um, couching their statements in, in terms of what they might experience if they were students in that class, um, not, you know, like, that approach just doesn't work. You know, you, that's not useful as a thing to say to a faculty member. What you should say is, if I were a student in this class, I might feel X, Y, or Z. And then that's something faculty can hear, and then they can say, well, why? Why would you feel that way? And so helping students learn how to have those kinds of conversations with people who have more power but are also very vulnerable in doing this kind of work. I think that's very important for students. And once they develop that language and that capacity, it transfers over to other courses, other relationships. But initially, it's new and it's scary and it's unknown. And it has to be built with a lot of trust in really it's building relationships you know with people in different positions and different amounts of power. Again I would definitely go back to thinking about sustainably think about um, how is this going to keep going because while I've been in, involved in certain projects definitely a few of them have tapered off because they've been contingent upon a certain faculty or a certain student oftentimes myself etc and an example of which being that at one point I was on a committee board um, and I was the student representative for three different programs. 
That, first of all, was very stressful as an individual, but on top of that, it just wasn't realistic because then, as soon as I graduated, everybody started panicking. We need three students, we need them right away, and nobody had thought past the fact that I was there. And again, I mean, it's just, that can be contingent on um, an, an, an administrator, it can be whatever it happens to be, but really thinking about long-term, how are we gonna keep this program going or this research project? Where is it going? Who's gonna be involved? How do we keep those positions um, continually open and offer to individuals who are interested? How do we invite other people into the conversation? Just make sure that it really continues um, in terms of recruitment and I guess integration, for sure.